My name is Julia. I'm a PhD student from Hannover in Germany. I'm a behavioral biologist. <laughs> So the goal of uh, my research is actually um, to find out how the communication structure in the white rhinoceros is in the groups and also how it is linked to reproduction and reflected in the hormones. We will have the possibility to play different calls to the rhinos here and then they will react to that, hopefully. Usually my day starts with taking fecal samples first to actually estimate the testosterone levels in the bull, for example. We do the same for the females, but that with um, progesterone and estrogen, so we see how regularly the female is cycling. Ah, they're sharing food. <laughs> and then I set up my whole equipment for recording. So I have my loudspeaker, the video cameras. We have, of course, also a microphone. The white rhinoceros, or the rhinos in general, are of course uh, one of the most endangered species on Earth. And the white rhinos is especially interesting for us um, because they're not solitarily living as, for example, the black rhino. If you know how an animal maybe acts differently, how it sounds differently due to some reproductive processes, you can actually use it as a non-invasive tool to monitor it, right? You don't need to take blood samples, it's easy. And that's why it's so important. But it's particularly windy or maybe it's cold or too warm, then they're also less reactive when it's too hot. Uh, when you do playbacks, it's very important that they always have the same position to the loudspeaker, the same distance. For example, Oliak right now is in a very good position, um, whereas Dinari, um, not so much. <laughs> So it is possible to do it in the wild, but it will take much, much longer, like logistically speaking as well. It's good to have some preliminary results or to know what you expect um, when you already did it um, in zoos. So you can actually take those results and go to the field. Of course, I know the reaction that they hopefully show when they hear something. Um, so we uh, pay a lot of attention to their ears because they have very moving ears. And so if they look up, if they turn, of course, the whole body movement. It's always difficult to work with animals. You're kind of always depending on the animal's wish to cooperate. <laughs> So we are at the very beginning, but I hope everyone who's working out that, I hope we will all contribute our part of it and then we can come to an end. Yeah.